Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Tuesday topic. Today's topic is CNAP's Tuesday Talks Together We Share, uh, presented by me, uh, Darren Dunstan, Assistant Director for PhD Programs in Professional uh, Education and the producer of Tuesday Topics. And moderating today's discussion is Jay Darius Green, Director of Retention and Recruitment and Alumni Engagement uh, and Student Services. So without further ado, let me throw it over to uh, Jay Darius Green to introduce himself. Uh, and I'm grateful to everybody who decided to spend a little time and join us for this little presentation. I've been thinking about this for a while, so I'm glad to finally be able to make this happen. There you go. All right, well, thank you all. And good afternoon, everyone. I mean, as I shared with um, Darren and um, everyone else earlier that um, if it's Tuesday, it's got to be um, time for Tuesday topics. So um, as mentioned, I'm Jay Darius Green, the Director of Recruitment, Retention, and Alumni Engagement. Um, and today, as mentioned, our presenter is Darren Dustin, um, who will talk about um, CNHP's Tuesday topics, um, Together We Share. So for our guests joining us, um, either in person or also um, online, um, we invite you to join the conversation uh, by adding your questions, but also your comments um, to the chat box. Um, we'll also take time to um, answer questions at the end. But if you have any questions um, throughout today's presentation, we can you know, certainly um, entertain those as well. So, um, so with that, I'll let um, Darren um, get started on Together We Share. Hi, everybody. Uh, so uh, thank you, Darius. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. Um, this is a, uh, a, like I said, a little presentation I've been thinking about trying to do for a good long time uh, to sort of share with the community what Tuesday Topics is, what sort of reach we've had, share some um, statistics, uh, and give some tips for folks who are thinking about what they might want to do for their events going forward. The College of Nursing Health Professions hosts Tuesday Topics, which is a designated space to connect faculty and students and staff to help grow the interprofessional community within the college. Um, I have to thank uh, someone who is no longer here, but Kristen Scatton, who helped me when we were first initiating Tuesday Topics to come up with some language to describe the various types of things that we do. Uh, and so she helped me draft this little piece of header language and I've tweaked it a couple of times over the years, but for the most part, it's remained pretty much the same ever since. Um, Tuesday topics frequently happen uh, during the academic year in the quarter. Uh, we have uh, 10 quarter or 10 weeks in, in the quarter on the Tuesdays. Uh, they're usually found at either 12 to one or four to five. And you can visit the website, which I was demonstrating before uh, to be able to see what we have coming up. Um, the original, the very first Tuesday topic occurred on uh, October 4, 2018, um, and there were actually two events that were scheduled on that day. Uh, we decided to start in an ambitious way, um, <laughs> mostly because uh, there were some events that were already scheduled and conveniently happened to be landing at that 12 to 1 hour on a Tuesday. So uh, I, as I recall, I was in the Scholar Share event. Uh, which uh, I think Brandy Joe, who's joining us here, was 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 the the, mo the faculty moderator for that event, uh, and then some of the other folks from the IPER committee were doing uh, the first event on IPE competencies. Um, so it's hard to be two places at once. So I had just started. Um, uh, oh, something I wanted to say. I've got about maybe twenty five minutes worth of slides. Uh, and then there's going to be some time for some question and answer. Um, so if you have questions, you can just feel free and just drop them on into the chat. Hi, welcome. Hi. Um, so I had just started in 2018 in October. Uh, October 1st, 2018 was my first day uh, working in my current role as the Assistant Director for PhD Programs in Professional Education. Um, and I was invited by my boss at the time, Bob Palisano, to have a meeting to see if we could, as a college, do something that was similar to something that Dean Gitlin had initiated when she first started in January of that year um, with the Daily Dose, which was, can we find a way to either better market these seminars that we are doing or schedule them in some organized way so that we are not doing what we did on the first day, which is essentially splitting our audience from the same, the, who, who might want to come to the same event, but making it impossible for them to do so. So we you know, started to do this. And so uh, in that meeting was uh, 
Bob Palisano and Kate Clark and Pat Auth and Scott Horowitz and Laura Valenti and me. And I just started. I started October 1st, and this was day four of my of my job. Um, and so who am I? Uh, I, I don't get a chance to really tell much folks about who I am or where I where I came from, but before I started here at Drexel, I was an actor for about 20 some odd years. Um, these are some images of me. Um, the, the, the mug in the lower right hand corner is what I look like today. But way back when, you know, I, that, that's a Flyers commercial that I did. Um, uh, the, the picture in the middle is uh, something I did in Clark Park, Shakespeare and Clark Park, um, uh, an industrial for recycling. Um, if you have 20 minutes to kill and want to see some ridiculous videos, you can Google or put my name into YouTube okay. and you can watch some of these commercials. Uh, the other things that I did is I did, I, I used to run a theater company called the Here Again Radio Project, um, which is a theater company dedicated to doing live presentations of um, old time radio shows. So when I was in this room and the problem arose, like how do we maximize our time and try to schedule these things so we're not tripping over each other, I approached it as a theater professional, as a theater producer. I was like, okay, so what I need to do is we're going to produce a season. And I was like, I've got 10 weeks in a quarter. We've got four quarters in a year. That's up to 40 potential weeks. Now, there's actually 52 weeks and there's a couple of overlaps, but I don't want to schedule things in times when people aren't available. Um, there's a lovely little gap in um, most student schedules, not every student schedule, but many student schedules um, between 12 and one, sort of a lunch hour, which is fine for a lunch and learn sort of activity just like this. Um, and then the four to five hour is also a potential window. Um, to be able to do some of these uh, things. Um, and so out of the gate, I was like, okay, we need a number of things. I need a web presence. We need a logo. We need to be able to figure out how we're going to communicate with folks. Um, I started working on like flyers and maybe someday, eventually one day down the, down the year, we will um, load these videos to YouTube so that we can share these with the community going forward. Um, the other challenge that I had was like, wow, 40 hours a year is a lot of content. So I have to find some partners so that we can sort of divide the load a little bit. So like the PhD Council of, uh, the Council of PhD Program Directors um, was doing a number of seminar series for the creative arts therapy students initially. And so I was like, great, if I can get PhD program to do three a year, they do one in the fall, one or one or one in the spring. If I can get um, the Board of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion to start figuring out how to do this, uh, the Faculty Affairs Committee, the IPER Committee, we have a number of people who need to communicate with folks from time to time. If I can get them to each commit to just doing one a year or one a quarter, then we're dividing the load um, so that all they really need to do is focus on their presentation and who their audience is. And I just sort of am there to provide the sort of backup support and the marketing support. So I connected with uh, Craig Schlanzer uh, in our Marcom division, and he and I went back and forth on creating a bunch of different logos. That's the logo for Tuesday Topics. It hasn't changed since we began it. Um, for me, it was important that the colors not be blue and gold. Um, they're Mardi Gras colors. <laughs> they are. Um, uh, and the other thing that, that sort of struck me is like when we were sitting around the table that first day, um, some people were like, oh, Topic Tuesday. So I was like, yeah, it doesn't quite feel right. It doesn't have the right mouth feel. I, I, we settled on Tuesday topics because it makes you go, ooh, then ah. You go Tuesday topics. Ooh, ah. <laughs> then we got our web address uh, and we also got an email address so that we can communicate out with folks. Um, having those two things makes it easier when marketing is organizing their email blasts to get out. If they have the content, then they can promote it. Um, in a more organized way. I try to, whenever we can, to make sure that every event gets at least three emails, either built into a regular ongoing email or built into a uh, regular, you know, a, a standalone event. 
the Board of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, with Amanda's help quite frequently, um, will uh, make sure that those events get uh, their own standalone emails in addition to the regular, regularly scheduled programming, um, just because they uh, sometimes we have to work a little harder to try to make sure we're reaching the right people, because mm -hmm. we want to make sure we're bringing the right people into the room. So for logistics, for me, the one thing that I always try to do is I have a, I keep a, a, a one sheet for each quarter. It's essentially this. It's a, I, I work out just figuring out what the days are. And then I sort of work from there to reach out to my partners to see if I can get them to say, give me a title, give me a brief description about what you're, what you're trying to do. Um, and then once I have all that information, I pass it along to the marketing team and get it into the pipeline so that we can begin to really knock it out. You may remember some, seeing some of those images that we've thrown up by the elevators uh, here in our new world. We haven't quite figured out, or I haven't yet figured out where or what the best means might be to be able to communicate with folks, but I want one. Um, that's one of the first email blasts that we sent out. Um, the Board of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion had done uh, in our initial year a sub-series called And Discuss which was um, uh, watching, uh, uh, Katie Couric uh, had a National Ge Ge Geographic series, um, I think it was called and Discuss. Mm -hmm. um, and so we essentially would watch the video and then we would talk about it. Um, and then the, the Bob Palisano was the presenter of the mentoring students engaged in research, uh, what are the best practices. Um, and now we have a website and I put up at the top, if you have an idea for a Tuesday topic, how you can contact me to be able to start the ball rolling on, think, on participating uh, in doing that. Um, our first year was pretty good. Uh, I'm just gonna move this so you guys can see it here in the room. Um, first year we did 38 events. We had uh, a total attendance of 786, which is pretty good for out of the gate. Um, uh, that's if you average that out, that's about 20 people per event, um, which was good. And I thought gives us room for growth, um, you know, especially considering we sort of started halfway through um, and we didn't do uh, we did more than 10 events in the week. Um, I, I do find that as we do these more, sometimes there's a little Tuesday topics burnout. Mm -hmm. uh, it sort of falls into the the background, it's wallpaper, um, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to hold this event so that I could talk to folks about what it is, what it isn't, um, and drive you to some of the resources that are out there. So for me, trying to figure out how to organize the 10 weeks and the, the 40 weeks of content that we were doing, if you've ever been in my office, you've seen that big board. Uh, that's over here on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, in that board, I would use it to sort of keep track of what we, uh, what the, at least the title of the events were and who my partners were to help me organize. I've got a picture of it in a little bit, uh, a little clearer down the, down the way. But in the, in 20, uh, going into our second year, 20, uh, I guess, uh, 2019, 2019, 20, which was our second year, um, we decided this year we were going to focus on doing, um, instead of the end discuss, we had a new uh, framing for the Board of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion discussions. It was uh, America to Maine, um, which was a series that uh, Veronica tells a story that she was uh, home one Sunday, turned on stars to watch this series about high school students um, at Oak Park, Illinois. Um, and she started watching it and then just couldn't stop. So she was like, it's so important for us to get a better sense of who our students that are coming to our door might be. She wanted to make sure that we were really focusing on them. So we reached out to the producers and we got actually permission for um, everyone at Drexel for at least a year um, to be able to watch the whole series. Um, so we got a license for the year so that everybody could watch the things and engage in our conversations from here. So here's the big board with a little more detail. So here's just how I, I generally structure it. Like, you know, for academic year 1920, you know, weeks one through 10, what are the dates? Um, and sort of sketch in what 
the uh, titles were. And down here at the bottom, you can see I would make flyers as we go and stick them up on the wall. And I've just for myself, I would sort of tag them up and put them on my board just for myself. And then I'd also make some notes to myself about some other things that we could do. Like here's a, a sort of sub list of my frequent, uh, the folks that I would go to most frequently, the PhD uh, program directors, staff council, the diversity board, uh, the board of diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, uh, we had a, a global engagement sub-series for a while, age work collaboratory. Um, and then some other ideas of things that, you know, had. I, I thought somebody would, would mention something in passing. They're like, well, that could be a good thing. We can do that eventually. Like, you know, one thing that I haven't done yet that I think would be interesting is um, interview techniques for introverts. Ooh. Like, how can we help folks who are shy build up their own... Um, you know, confidence when they have to interview. And if you're going to succeed in an academic environment, which many people are, um, oftentimes you're, you know, you're book bound. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, going into, uh, you know, here are some of the folks that we had and like here was the, uh, going into spring 20, these were some of the ideas that I had lined up. Uh, we had heard that there was this, um, you know, COVID was coming <laughs> when I was organizing the, uh, the, the winter quarter. Uh, I was like, you know, we should do something about this pandemic that is coming, or at least to better prepare folks to, to come in. So like the images that you've seen have been sort of the, my board that is now a, an art piece. It is, uh, I froze it in time. I haven't really touched it except to move it from one building to the other. But the last one that we did before we went out for a break was Tuesday, March 10, 2020, and the university closed on March 13. So going into the spring quarter, we had to figure out how to, I had a whole 10 weeks lined up, had to figure out how to pivot so that we could change the, the the structure of Tuesday topics from being in the room first and online second to all online. And I think at this moment, we're kind of in that same pivot again, only the other way. Um, there were a lot of things that I learned in the Zoom environment that I think is useful, um, especially for folks who aren't going to be traveling to come see you uh, all that often. Uh, that that, that the, the Zoom experience sort of equalizes the experience. Everybody's looking at the same slides. Everybody's looking at the same screen. You can see your Brady Bunch pictures uh, up on the screen. Um, and when you're in a, 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 a real, you know, like when you're, when you're doing them in a hybrid fashion, oftentimes the folks who are online are forgotten. So like you'll notice even in our setup here today, um, Darius is sitting across the table for me. We both have cameras at us so that we can make it a more pleasant experience for the folks who are joining us, but also we have the folks here in the room so that we can, uh, uh, you know, connect with you. It's always lovely to see faces. You, before you get into the numbers, I have a question. Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so I, I think back to, like you said on day four. <laughs> You're like really having a discussion about what you want to do. And then really like three months later, here you are really showing the fruits of your labor. But I'm thinking about like your theater background and like really how you were really almost made for this. Like really, and I say that because, you know, really um, you say producing, but everything you talked about, it's a system. So I'm just curious in terms of how you feel your theater background really prepared you to almost like step into this role and thrive the way you've actually been doing? I do think it's prepared me to do, I, I think that my career in the theater has been really useful in lots of different ways that I never anticipated when I was studying to be an actor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's all about time management and making sure that when the light goes on or the stage manager says go, mm -hmm. you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, so, one thing that I've learned in being in the theater is you can do a lot with a little if you start early enough, mm -hmm. if you organize your thoughts well enough, if you are thinking with thinking towards the end in mind. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, 
when I went into that meeting, did I think that five years later, I'd be sitting here talking about mm -hmm. this thing that I, we sort of pulled together really quick? No, um, but it's still going. I do, one thing that did strike me as I was thinking about this um, uh, this morning or last night is that, okay, so the le typical life cycle of an undergraduate student is about four years. At Drexel, it's five, but here it's four. Uh, most places it's four. So everybody that was uh, an undergraduate student when we started it is gone. Oh, yeah. So, you know, students don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and so coming into our fifth year of production, I, I think it's a time to sort of give it a little more juice and a little more attention sure, yeah. um, and remind people that what when Tuesday topics work best, it's when we bring together conversations that don't happen naturally. Mm -hmm. When you're studying in your nutrition program or studying in your rehab science program or studying with just your own cohort, well, you, you, don't you don't easily rub against other people who might be approaching things from a different perspective, which is, you know, again, my, my theater background. It's like everybody comes from a, a different thing and, and to, to bring those different people together as collaborators, you never know what sort of sparks you're gonna mm -hmm make happen um, that you just didn't think about because you're only talking to the same folks. Sure, yeah. um, so whenever possible, I try to make sure that the uh, folks who are presenting their events talk about who their audience is and who you want to reach and be clear about it. Just state it in your, in your ask so that you can um, find the people that you hope will want to come to your event. Sure, yeah, great. Um, and we try to make them fun. You know, Mardi Gras. There you yeah. go. <laughs> I, I think you were made for this. So oh, I, I, I think it's perfect. So yeah. Thank you. Um, so just sort of getting back to the, the, the second year, our attendance dropped, but again, COVID. Um, you know, that pivot, that little asterisk that I put in 1920 is, is where we pivoted. Um, we started doing some more online-based mm -hmm. things. Uh, they were all online. Um, but one of the things that I was... Uh, sad about when that took place is we had done a series of things about the American and me, and I didn't want to let that go. So one of the things that I'm actually most proud of is uh, we made a, a couple of events that were just pre-recorded things on those topics. Instead of doing them live, we pre-recorded a conversation with some board members talking about the uh, episode itself, and then we edited it and posted that uh, as its own standalone thing. So like we, by leaning into what we can put on YouTube and sort of thinking about the after effects, um, you know, these are just the live attendance numbers, um, which again, starts at about 20. It's dropped off a little bit if you sort of average it out, but still, I, I think impressive. Cool. Um, how do I get those numbers? Well, whenever somebody attends an event, I, I keep a spreadsheet. Usually it's easier when you're, when I'm doing it remotely, um, but I keep a little spreadsheet and I sort of highlight the folks in yellow who are there. Um, and then I categorize it on another spreadsheet to get a sense of what, not just who was in the room, but what type of person was in the room. But what really I found very exciting that we were able to do, uh, really leaned into during the pandemic, it started actually just in the weeks leading up to it, um, was loading, editing our videos and loading them up to the CNHP YouTube channel. So we currently have 97 videos that are up there. Uh, they have received 965 views. Um, there's the link to the web page or the Tuesday Topics page. If you click on that yellow bar at the bottom of the page, um, that'll take you out to the CNH YouTube, uh, YouTube channel. Um, our most recent events, uh, uh, Michelle Radigan is, is on the line. Michelle, your event uh, is up there, the uh, How to Form and Support Your Affinity Group. Um, just before the pandemic, we had done a, uh, just before we let, went out for the pandemic, we had done a developing search strategies part one. And as we were going into this year, I was like, we always wanted to do a part two, but we, we didn't because COVID. <laughs> so this year we did. And in order to make that one happen, we encouraged everybody who attended to watch the old video and then come with your questions. So it was a real exchange of ideas. Um, uh, 
the, uh, we developed a little sub-series of Ethically Speaking, which are um, uh, responsible conduct of research uh, sub-series. Um, and uh, our most viewed Tuesday topics, um, the Being Anti-Racist Workshops 1 and 2, which were done by 11th Street, um, have gotten like markedly more views than everything else. Um, I actually looked back to see what sort of comments have come in. There's lots of views, no comments. I think for political reasons, a number of people have downvoted it. Um, so it doesn't get a lot, it didn't get a lot of upvotes. But I think um, if I look at the statistics on when um, those uh, spikes happen, like that uh, between May 20, you, you can see some pretty big spikes of, of when some videos get some traction. Um, when we first started putting these up here, Tuesday topics in that first year was the number three uh, uh, most viewed thing on the, the, on the CNHP YouTube channel. Um, and over time, we have become the first and we've continued to be the, the, the top producing or the most viewed uh, thing. So therefore, um, any time is time for Tuesday topics as opposed to if it's Tuesday, it's time for Tuesday topics. Um, so I get some fun analytics that I can look at. Most of these numbers that you see up here on the screen were analytics that I pulled. We were planning to do this event in the fall, but we pushed it a little bit because the technology in the building wasn't quite working the way we wanted to. Um, so we're working to see if we can ramp up some more things going forward. Um, but I find it interesting to me, you know, to sort of see like, okay, February is a month when we're producing a lot. So yeah, that gets a good little spike. And March is a month where we're not producing very often. So that goes down a little bit. Um, but I just find those general statistics to be pretty interesting. Um, the um, top views, uh, the being anti-racist, you know, most things tend to get pretty low numbers, but the being anti-racist and the meeting the moment and the uh, part two of the being anti-racist tends to always um, uh, have some, some afterlife um, as opposed to just a live event. Um, these are some of my personal favorites. Um, it, it was hard to pick among my children <laughs> <laughs> as I was trying to think of what I liked so that the America to me, Real Talk on Whiteness was the one that I mentioned before where we um, edited, had the conversation and edited it down for this. Um, the preparing for potential pandemic, which I thought was just timely. Um, uh, the event, uh, Timing is Everything, was Don McEachran uh, talking about um, the essentially some research on like when is the best time to take a medication, depending on the biorhythms of somebody's life. I was like, oh, that was interesting. Um, so I, that one just sort of popped for me as interesting. The Why Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Matters in Academia, that was um, uh, uh, Stephanie Brooks and uh, Kim Montgomery and Veronica Carey. Um, and as a part of that, we did a seven minute, seven or eight minute snip of messages that had come up from previous diversity, equity, and inclusion videos. So talking about like things that came from our past discussions that um, were things that leadership should be thinking about and people should be thinking about. Um, my, some of my favorite events are the, the homecoming events that the PhD Directors Council has done where we've invited back folks who have graduated to come and talk about what they were thinking about when they were working on your dissertation, what questions they wish that somebody had asked them when they were working on their dissertation. Um, all these are available 24 seven. Um, I've heard from some folks that they like to put them on like a podcast. So doing the dishes, put on a, a YouTube or a Tuesday topic and give it a listen while you're working. Um, what the heck is SharePoint? Uh, Amanda and Brian, uh, from time to time, we have done some uh, sessions on things that were important to the life cycle here at home, here in the college, uh, and better understanding how the SharePoint differs from your OneDrive, differs from your Teams, um, was a, a really great session. Yay, man. Um, the uh, listening with the ears, the heart, developing uh, listening skills to be more present. 
um, was uh, the folks over in West Ball in the theater program came and did a session about how to build empathy um, by doing theater games. It was, and we did it via Zoom. So everybody sort of like broke up into little, uh, uh, into, into to breakout rooms, had an experience and came back and were trying to, uh, and then shared back. It was really fun. Um, and then the guiding principles while teaching across disciplines was one of the first Tuesday topics that we had done. Um, I just found it to be a really interesting conversation. Um, so speaking again about the, the trying to balance things out, I think the one of the events that we did last year uh, in 1043 before we shifted over here was really trying to lean into making sure that our um, the people in the room are getting the same experience as the folks who are joining online. Um, so I found, you know, this finding new lanes in DEI as a, thing, as a starting place for action. It's a really interesting event, and I think models that sort of experience pretty well. Um, and uh, yeah, so those are just some of the ones that I found pretty good. Um, I also created a number of sub lists uh, on the on the the YouTube channel. Like all the ethically speaking are sort of clustered together in a sub list. Um, the Board of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. I, I don't know how many videos they have up there. It, it's a lot. Um, I think it's in the 60 range. We also have a lot of our speaker series. Um, our distinguished speakers are, are also included. Great. So like uh, you may find on some of the, you may see the same video on multiple lists, but that's only because I, we, I tried to cluster them out, at least like the professional development skills and the research skills and the postdoc discussions to see if we could um, help folks find the hundreds of hours of content that we have built um, that might be useful to you. Yes, ma'am. How do we get to um, to get all those addresses? If you go to, well, I, I'll share the, the slide deck with you. Oh, okay. Um, when, when we're done. Um, but if you, the, the easiest way is you, if you get to the, the CNHP site, um, then there are sub, you can click playlists and there's a, a number of playlists that are on. Okay. Um, so you want to make a Tuesday topic. Generally, what I need in order to build out my one sheet is is essentially I need a, an event title that's catchy and brief. Um, the uh, university calendar only gives us 60 characters to play with. So try to keep your, your titles catchy and brief. Um, I don't need much more than three or four sentences that are well crafted to define who your audience is and what your event is and what make someone want to spend their lunch hour hanging out with you? Um, what can you do to make it sticky um, so that it sticks to the people that you want to attract to come to your event? Um, list your presenters and list your ideal audience. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that I do. Um, we have an individual Qualtrics survey for each event. Um, some events like the ones from the Board of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion especially, or things that are dealing in that space uh, need to be approved by the university's office. Um, we have publishers of the university calendar, the web page, arranged for technical support, ALOS, terrific for being helping out with this. Um, and then once it's up on the web, it can be used in routine things. I tend to work pretty far in advance. Um, I am currently working on spring quarter. Um, I, my sort of deadline for myself is week seven. Um, cause I think in terms of 10 week cycles, um, so around February 21, I'm going to try to lock down everything I can for spring. Got a couple of windows still, but not many, um, cause I've only got 10 weeks per cycle. And I try to not do anything in week one or week 10, just because those are really busy in the life cycle of the faculty and the staff, um, and the students, um, I think the best weeks to sort of plan things, even if you're just trying to reach out to your students, is try to avoid midweek or midterms. Try to avoid week one, try to avoid week 10 in exam week. Um, so that leaves weeks two through four <laughs> and weeks six through nine. Um, and probably closer to the, the, the middle of that is a little better for folks. Um, uh, there's a, I think there's a chat question. 
it, it was a comment saying this was an amazing resource. Oh, great, thank you. Yeah. Um, so when you're think when you're doing your event, um, I created a, a little uh, document that I'll share with folks as they are presenting at least. But I sort of took the the main elements, which is like you know choose two topics run for an hour. You want to identify somebody who can serve as a host moderator. So if you're the presenter, it's hard to do everything, but Darius is helping me by checking the chat and make sure people try to make sure that everybody's getting equal time. It's really a matter of equity. Um, try not to put your um, people of color or minoritized people at the, at the end of a list. Oftentimes folks, especially white folks, um, don't realize how much space they take up or maybe they realize that they're deliberate about it. Um, but they, they try to make sure everybody's getting, you've invited people to your pre to present, make sure they get their time. And sometimes if somebody is not being respectful of other people's time, either the host moderator needs to pause them or sometimes I've stepped up and said, hey, um, we have a lot of other folks that make sure everybody's getting their time. Um, so that's just a little rule of thumb. Um, the, uh, uh, I, I give you a couple of just suggestions to be able to uh, say, oh, that's a really great comment. Let's see if we can uh, give everybody their time. Um, that's what I just talked about. <laughs> um, it's a good idea to let folks know how you want them to communicate with you. Like at the beginning of this event, I tried to model that if you have a comment or question, you can drop it into the chat. And after I finish chatting, which I've been talking a lot, so I don't know much time. You're, you're fine. I'm, good. I'm, I'm monitoring your time here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've got about 20 more minutes. Excellent. Here. Good. So I'm, I'm actually, I think I'm almost done uh, with my slides anyway. Um, these are some good examples of some time marks of people uh, uh, getting a hold of, of a conversation and directing people back into their, uh, to stay on topic. Um, uh, on the day of the event, uh, I tend to be either in the Zoom room or in the per in person roughly 20 to 30 minutes ahead of time. Uh, as with today, I had Ayla help me get the tech set up um, to make sure that you as the presenters can focus on just doing your presentation. Um, when I'm doing them, supporting them from Zoom, I tend to just sit in the background. I don't usually say much, but I'm listening. Um, I'm recording this. Uh, after the event, I'll work with the, uh, IT team to edit the videos and get them uploaded uh, so that this can be shared more widely with folks who couldn't attend or had intended to attend. I do know some folks that uh, I see their name on every one of the events, but I rarely see them actually attend because I think they just want to say, oh, I want to make sure I get the email for when this is over so that I can go watch it later. Um, so just a couple of advice if you're, um, it's never a bad idea, especially when you're working remotely to make sure that everybody, more than one person has access to your slide deck. Um, uh, if you need to test drive your equipment, make sure you do that beforehand. Um, and that's it. I've got some people to thank because I can't do this. It's not a, an alone thing. Um, the CNHPIT team, Steve Shkrowski, Ayla Lunau, um, and Brad Wallace and Brian Thomas, um, a tremendous resource. It used to be when I when we first started doing this, I was doing all the editing of all the videos mm -hmm. and personally uploading them all. Um, having some help with that is a great help. Um, Maggie and Craig helped me get things up to the web. Um, uh, the Linda and, and uh, Diaz helped get stuff up to uh, the university calendar, uh, some regular heavy hitters, the uh, uh, CNHP Council of PhD programs with uh, Roseanne Maria Galelli and, and Milka Brat, um, the Office of Research and Innovation, Roseanne Maria Galelli, um, Harisha Kaimar and Bob Palisano, the Board of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion with Dr. Ron Kikari and, and Amanda Keene, uh, and all these folks who have helped us make this thing really great. So my, my, my purpose in doing this was to A, let more folks know about what is up on the web. So I'll share that slide deck with you. Um, the other purpose was to see if we can get a little more juice to build more. Um, any questions? I'm sorry, saying this is great. <laughs> I mean, 
and you also, I, I hear your, your passion, you know, coming through, you know, with this as well. So um, it is your baby. So yeah, any, any questions from anyone here? Okay. Well, I just have a question. I mean, so just a couple of words come to mind. And if there are questions that we have um, for our guests online, certainly feel free to add those in the chat. But, you know, as, as you're talking, like this is educational, it's fun, it's accessible. Um, I, even the way you collaborated or, you know, put together all the, the, the programs or the YouTube videos by different themes, but it's also collaborative. And so I'm curious in terms of how you feel this has helped to build a stronger sense of community within within the college. I think it has helped because it, 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 it was easier when we were in person mm -hmm. pre-pandemic to bring people together in real space. It was a real trick to try to continue that momentum once we were all contacting virtually. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we did in the pandemic was we shifted things from the uh, 12 to one time into four to five because at the start of the pandemic, I was thinking, well, it might be easier for folks when, when you're in physical classrooms taking a lunch hour, well, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But when everything that you're doing is on Zoom, um, trying to add another Zoom in between your two classes mm -hmm. might be a challenge. So we shifted to four to five. I think we're probably gonna split it a little bit this year, still the, the 12 to one and the four to five and eventually drive everything back into that 12 to one mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been a real trick because some events are, uh, it's, it's tricky um, to balance it so that you're actually putting things at a time that makes sense mm -hmm. for the people you are hoping to attend. Yeah, great. I think that answered the question. Ah, there you <laughs> I, The question was about, um, is it time now to move to, to noon or wiggle room with the four to five time slot? And then they, Michelle said, ah, you just magically answered. You read her mind. So <laughs> you're a producer and like a, a mind reader as well. So, um, we call them wizards. Oh, wizards. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. Any, any, any other questions or comments or thoughts? No? Okay. I'm curious in terms of like, I mean, um, just about the time that, that you've done it, um, Wizard, Darren, Santa Claus, et cetera. So you're, you're lots of names. So um, what are some, some lessons you've learned, you know, about others maybe within the college or things you've learned or um, areas of discussion that you learned, but also like what have you learned in terms of what you've done different, like for every different one? Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, the, 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 the pivot to, to doing more things online was a big lift, mm -hmm. but I think everybody was having that same lift. Um, the one piece that I want to try to make sure that we're holding on to um, that I learned that I think is beneficial is that the people who are joining online are just as valuable as the people in the room, um, even though we can't give them pizza. <laughs> um, sometimes I can bribe people with pizza uh, or snacks. Um, I think we have a really vibrant community of people who want to share. Sometimes it takes a little coaxing to encourage people to want to share. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the people I work with yeah. and I want to help them reach their audience. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had some good conversations and there's space to make more. Mm -hmm. I agree, I think it's great. You gave in terms of some information in terms of like how to prepare for it. Um, how much time do you, what, what advice would you give to someone presenting on a topic as someone who's gonna be doing one in April? Like how much time would you advise giving them themselves to prepare for the topic or to, for the presentation? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I mean, I, I tend to, just, just my strategy, I start building my slides and then I just keep going and I know that I talk fast. Mm -hmm. So I'll often have an awful lot of slides that I know I'm only gonna spend a minute or two on or not even a minute or two. Um, so know your presenting style. Mm -hmm. um, some events, like when we're doing those, um, the age well groups where people who have received their grants are sharing back, um, they have a big project that they wanna to try to distill down to like one or two Thing. So it's never a bad idea to um, practice, mm -hmm. um, make sure that you have your 
the, the message that's on your visuals match the message that you want to share with the people you want to share it with. Um, and uh, practice, rehearse. Mm -hmm. I, I've rehearsed this a couple of times. Uh, in fact, it's been running through my head for years. <laughs> and, we, and um, someone just commented that, you know, Tuesday topics are really, you know, appetizers for like bigger topics. Yeah, actually, that's one thing that I did want to say. If you're, um, if you're, if you're targeting people that don't naturally come together, mm -hmm. Tuesday topics is a great venue. Mm -hmm. But again, it's small. It's only an hour. Mm -hmm. um, if you are trying to do a training session for a thing, a specialized thing like Concur, which is oh. the, the training, you know, the new software that's coming on. That's not a Tuesday topic. <laughs> there are other avenues that we can explore for those more nitty gritty, down and dirty, complicated things that don't fit within a 50 minute a one hour window. Um, so, you know, think about how th these are about bringing people together to share ideas, to spark other ideas mm -hmm. um, and see if we can build upon the work that we've done. So one thing that I like about some recent changes I've seen on YouTube is uh, it used to be you'd load a video and it would just, there would be no breaks. Like it would just put it up there, but they've started putting in like every time there's a new slide, it puts in a marker uh, yes. to make it easier for you to navigate it. So if you're teaching a class that's about diversity uh, or there's a topic that you wanna dive into, you can more easily click through and see where that piece of conversation might be um, and then lift that out to put in your Blackboard shell, lift it out to share in your class, um, ask your students to watch the, the, the fuller presentation and then have a, as a jumping off point for a bigger conversation. Great. Any other comments or questions? Or but they're available else? to you anytime, 24 seven. Well, I'll, I'll say, I just started in, well, May of last year as someone who was, you know, preparing for my interview for the job. I certainly, you know, looked at all the, the videos that were there, the Tuesday topics, you know, certainly, you know, stepped out to me. So um, I think it's, it's not only educational, but it's also helpful, you know, for someone to learn about like the happenings that are taking place within the college and if you happen to want to mention that in an interview, but I think, but it's, it's still informative and um, the, I'd go back to the accessibility, the fact that I was just able to just, you know, type in, you know, what I was looking for and bam, it's right there. But to also, it was helpful for me um, as someone that was interested in joining the CNHP community, like to see how I might have aligned with the community in terms of, you know, what um, the college, the happenings that were going on. So I think, you know, the, the title, like together we share, is very helpful because it, and it's right, what the person mentioned is that it is an appetizer to get you to start thinking about what's going on, how can I build on this, how could I add my own voice to this community, um, but I think also about, especially for, you know, I know a lot of faculty, but also professional staff, but even for students, you know, graduate or undergraduate, start thinking about, um, you know, how they might want to um, start building their own portfolio. And I think this might be you know, a great way for them to start. Yeah, I mean, it's always been a, 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 like the Board of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion will frequently do at least one or two uh, events a year that feature students. They essentially run the whole thing soup to nuts. Mm -hmm. So we provide a little bit of structure to help them make sure that they're thinking about the things they need to to put their best foot forward and make sure that their presentation goes as smoothly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we we can do a lot with a little mm -hmm. if we apply ourselves and start early. Mm -hmm. I think that's my big message, my big takeaway. Yeah, that that plan. And even when I you know propose a topic to you, like you were even thinking like, have you thought about this? And I'm like, I never would have thought to you know have to even you know to reach out to you know who you advised me to reach out. But I think it was important because. I still need to do that, but yeah, it was, even the conversation, I think, is still, you know, important to to bring, you know, that that group into. So. Right, because we, we have not only the people, I mean, it, one of the big shifts in our college is for a long time, we've been in the island that is Center City. Mm -hmm. But now that we are here in University City, we have, and even in this building, there are new collaborations and new partners to meet and get to know. Um, and so being able to, to sort of cross those boundaries and realize that there are 
deeper pools of people we can engage in our conversation. Mm -hmm. Like one of the things that we did uh, as the in the postdoc discussions, another one of the, the, the most viewed videos that, that are on the college was a, a series that we did on interviewing for academic positions mm -hmm. with Ellen Bass um, and uh, uh, Rockmore, you're getting blanking on her first name. But we did a series of three, mm -hmm. um, and those events are really well viewed. They get mm -hmm. seen every month. They have like thousands of views. Mm -hmm. um, so th there are conversations that we can capture, and we can continue to share the mm -hmm. share the wealth. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of those people that are viewing, especially the mostly viewed ones, are certainly within the drugs community. But I'm sure lots of them are also outside of the community as well. Like and seeing it as a tremendous resource. So, so yeah, we've got about maybe five or seven more minutes or so, but any questions here? No, any questions online? I guess, I guess my one question would be, um, what have been, other than it seems like online, the anti-racist series was by far the most successful. Yeah, that got the most views. Yeah, yeah most yeah. viewed for um, what other ones other, I guess, more in person or during the sessions were kind of the most successful ones. I know you pulled out some of your favorite ones. Um, and what would you like to see? I know you have some other ideas, the, like the interview for introverts. What's your kind of like next ideas that you think would be like the big successful topics? Well, I had tried to pull together an event before the Dobbs decision came down about the downstream health effects for that, for Roe versus Wade being overturned. Um, I still would like to try to pull that conversation together. I think there are, we have, I think we have a framework where we can have some more substantive conversations than uh, usual. I think that the, the, there was a, a session that was really useful with uh, the impact of coronavirus on minority communities led by uh, Lisa Lanza, uh, who is no longer a student, a graduate. Um, and so that was a really fascinating conversation to learn about the, the impact that were being felt in, in other communities. Um, the, I invited, uh, or we invited with Dr. Carey, um, Maurice Cotman to do a, 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 a series on um, white faces in black, or black faces in white spaces, and some other uh, uh, interesting conversations um, that were I found really moving. Uh, a couple of times, some students got emotional and overwhelmed by the topic of the conversation. Um, but it was nice to have a supporting community to help support the students through those. So there, there's, we have lots of directions we can go. Um, I'm always looking for new ideas. So if you, sometimes people will say, hey, I want to do a topic on X. And I'll be like, great. How soon? Um, I need a title and a description. And oftentimes people will send me the title and the description. And I'll read it and see if I can either, I'm meeting with a student later this afternoon and actually sent me something that I don't think quite captured what she was mm -hmm. hoping to present. Um, so I gave her a couple of suggestions to see if we can round out that marketing piece and also help her frame her discussion a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm also looking for partners like on the, from the faculty to sort of help. If I have a student who has a topic that I think needs a little mentorship, um, having a little bit of uh, that would be useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just thank you for them reading some of the comments. Someone said thanks for this overview. Um, just building on what you just said, they said especially now um, that we live in a new space, how can we live into the community authentic, uh, uh, authentically? And um, I know people are doing lots of great work that can facilitate um, choosing topics, and that's something that popped to my mind. Um, we we really sometimes we like downplay ourselves in terms of what we have to offer. So you know we we may expert such like a strong word, but we do have a lot to offer. And I think what was mentioned earlier, what you've echoed is that it is like an appetizer for something larger. And it's it's like a, a launching pad to a larger discussion. And it's also, you know, a good space to really start out to really, what I think you're trying to do today is for us to build on 
um, what you've already done and also what we as a college have also done as well. So, so yeah. We've done a lot and there, we can always make more. There you go. Good. <laughs> and did I answer your question? Was there? Okay. Great. Cool. Well, we got like two more minutes, but you know, I would just say, you know, thanks for everyone for joining both in person, but also online as well. And so um, I hope you've enjoyed the conversation. And as mentioned, if you're thinking about a Tuesday topic, they can email you right at um, yeah. Tuesday topics at Drexel. Edu. Yeah, you can email there and I'll get back to you. Uh, and, and we need a Tuesday topic with Taco Tuesday by Darren. Well, <laughs> ah, <laughs> I like that. I like tacos. I like tacos. Taco Tuesday topics. <laughs> Excellent. There you go. All right. Well, all right. thank you all for joining us today. Thank you.